Hello everyone, back to you in today's third video. We're going to a GFS Ensembles watch for uh, today's third and final video. We're going to go through all uh, 20 plus members of the GFS Ensembles, including the operational run of the uh, extended GFS to see what these models are showing going into the second half of uh, February. So we've done two videos today. First video was a uh, spring analog special. You can find that video on the spring analogs uh, on the spring um, updates and forecast page. Uh, and there's a written report that goes with that as well. Um, today's second video was the Gaz Lovey's Sunday Roundup. That's here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and uh, you'll be able to see that video above the snow desk. It's your usual Sunday mix of this and that. Uh, but we specifically focus on what's happening in the stratosphere uh, over the next uh, week or two, uh, looks like we're going to get a sudden stratospheric warming, and this could have quite major impacts on the uh, polar vortex and might set up some blocking over the North Pole. So into the second half of February, we might find that the pattern starts going more towards a more extreme version of blocking, uh, perhaps, and that we might lock into quite a cold spell. Always is um, dependent on where the block sits because uh, not, it isn't necessarily guaranteed that the block will sit in a position to give us notably cold weather. It might sit in a position that gives somewhere else notably cold weather and we find ourselves on the mild side of the block. So it's sort of um, it's a bit of a do or die type situation, uh, really. So uh, we'll have a look at GFS and so on. We'll see how many of them are starting to pick up on the potential uh, for some uh, blocking into the second half of uh, February. We're going to begin uh, in a week's time on Sunday the 11th of February. We'll run through all those ensemble members right now. We're going to begin with the operational run of the uh, GFS. So uh, just update the midday run uh, of the operational GFS and its, and its ensembles have uh, updated in the last hour or so. This is how uh, it's looking for a week's time. This is Sunday, the 11th of February. Um, as we run through these ensembles, keep an eye on this area up here where we've got all of this um, pink and purple because that is uh, at least partly the polar vortex that's up over uh, Greenland and extends back into the Arctic. If the Southern Stratospheric Warming is working as we expect it to, then we'll start to see those pink and purple colours being diminished and possibly eventually maybe being replaced by uh, high pressure. But with the operational of the GFS in a week's time, we still have that strong polar vortex going around Greenland and up to the North Pole. We have a ridge extending uh, across the UK and building up towards Scandinavia. So it'll be pretty chilly at this point. Um, even into next weekend, it could stay quite uh, cold, especially for the south, and uh, maybe fairly frosty too. Right, let's run through the extended range then. And we go up to uh, Monday the 12th, and we find high pressure building in from off the Atlantic with the operational run of the GFS. This takes us to day 10, which is Wednesday the 14th of February. High pressure is dominating. And notice it's beginning to pull up towards Scandinavia as well. We've also got high pressure back over uh, western parts of Russia. So it appears this ridge is starting to push uh, northwards and eastwards by day 10. And that continues as we extend out beyond uh, day 10. We find quite an area of high pressure developing around Scandinavia and it's also starting to ridge towards Greenland as well. Notice very, very quick, there's purple colours there at day 10, but very quickly just beyond that, those purple colours just kind of go away and diminish as we get towards the end of the operational run of the GFS, which takes into second half of February. We're going into quite a blocked and cold pattern then. Rather extensive blocking is setting up. It centres over Scandinavia, but it does stretch out towards Iceland and Greenland as well. And we're in a real easterly wind um, there. And notice over Greenland, we haven't yet got blocking over Greenland, but those pink and purple colours have more or less gone. I've been replaced by greens and blues, telling us that the heights are lifting up, whilst we don't yet have a blocking feature in place over Greenland. Certainly, we are seeing a rapid weakening and diminishing of the polar vortex, which is kind of what you expect to see after you've had a uh, sudden stratospheric warming. Right, so that's the operational run. Let's have a look, have a look at the um, GFS Ensembles. And this is the uh, control uh, run of the GFS Ensemble. So this is run at a slightly lower 
resolution compared to the operational run, but at a higher resolution compared to all other ensemble members. All of these um, runs that you're going to see are starting next Sunday, a week away, Sunday the 11th of February. So this one has us in a fairly mild uh, westerly wind in the north anyway, uh, next Sunday for the south it's probably still quite cold and frosty we run out uh, beyond that and go up towards day 10 high pressure building in from off the Atlantic very similar to what the operational GFS is doing uh, in that the high pressure goes up towards Scandinavia and we start to pull in the wind from an easterly direction so we're bringing cold uh, air from the east notice pressure is rising at the same time in the Atlantic and starting to move up towards Greenland. This is getting us into a proper locked-in, blocked, cold pattern. The control run of the GFS is uh, ending up uh, by turning it through to the 20th of February on a very cold note. We've got a proper Greenland blocking feature there around uh, Greenland and Iceland, and the wind is in from the north and the northeast. That's very cold, and it's probably producing quite a lot of snow, especially for eastern parts of the country. This is ensemble member number one. It has high pressure over Scandinavia uh, next weekend, and as we go out beyond that, we find that uh, the Scandinavian high uh, just kind of strengthens, really, so it keeps us in those cold, easy winds as we get out beyond day 10. Uh, this is a cold uh, run throughout, really, from next weekend going into the second half of um, February. We've got cold easterly winds, and notice with time, it's getting more blocked uh, over towards Greenland as well, so we end up on the 20th of February with bitterly cold easterly winds and a proper blocking feature from Scandinavia to Greenland. That's a very cold and wintry uh, ensemble member. This ensemble member number two, this one looks much milder uh, for next weekend with the wind in from the southwest even the south would be quite mild with that one then the high pressure is building through the country what happens as we get out into the second half of uh february we have a high pressure going more up towards scandinavia starting to try and block out uh the atlantic however this one keeps us in a more or less atlantic driven flow up to the end of the run which is the 20th of february so that's a milder and much more unsettled ensemble member albeit we do still have the high pressure over scandinavia just not quite strong enough to place us in those easterly winds ensemble member number three looks quite frosty from the south next weekend and uh unsettled fairly mild up in the north going out beyond that um, getting into up towards day 10. So high pressure is close to the country, just centred to our west uh, with this one. But uh, wind is having a go at getting into the east. So for the south, we do bring in some cold easterly winds. And uh, then as we get out into extended range, um, it gets colder, really. We start to bring in more of an easterly influence. We finish up with high pressure centering over the top of the country within quite cold air. This ensemble member number four, this one uh, looking unsettled for next weekend as we go out uh, up towards day 10. We find that high pressure is having to go to build over Scandinavia again, but we've still got quite uh, a strong pole of vortex churning away to the south of Greenland. Is there going to be any weakening of that? Uh, so this one, it uh, keeps high pressure generally centering over and to the south and the east of the country as we get up towards the end of the um, of the end of the run, which is the 20th of February. This is a bit of a risk that we do have with this kind of uh, southern stratospheric wind. This is placing us on the mild side of a blocking feature. There is a blocking feature that's building over Scandinavia, but we keep wind in from a southerly southeasterly direction. That's always a risk when you have uh, this kind of event going on. This is ensemble member number five, and uh, high pressure is up over Scandinavia next weekend, but we are basically in a uh, still relatively uh, Atlantic-driven flow. We run up to, uh, towards day 10, a little bit beyond day 10, and uh, low pressure keeps churning away to uh, the north and the west of the country. That's very unsettled and quite stormy there. Uh, with that ensemble member number five. Certainly nothing particularly cold from the east with that one. This ensemble member number six, we've got high pressure over Scandinavia next Sunday, low pressure out in the Atlantic. So uh, let's see what becomes of uh, this one. And we find that low pressure keeps churning away from Scandinavia, going up to a little bit beyond uh, day 10 from the Atlantic, I should say. But high pressure is building over Scandinavia, and eventually it's starting to break through, break 
here, uh, breaking the pattern, uh, and we go into that very cold, strong, bitterly cold, easterly wind. Uh, we finish up with signs of retrogression, signs that we're starting to take that high pressure from Scandinavia and move it more towards Greenland. That's a locked in cold pattern that's developing there. Ensemble member number seven uh, looks like that. Uh, fairly mild for uh, next weekend as we go out beyond that. Uh, it stays quite unsettled and stormy going into the second half of uh, February with this ensemble member. That's how we finish up. Nothing really cold doing at all uh, on that one, generally keeping the wind from a west or southwesterly direction. This is ensemble member number eight, has high pressure in over Scandinavia next Sunday. Relatively cold for some of the eastern parts of the country, a little bit more and settled and milder uh, up to the north. As we go out up towards day 10, we find that uh, low pressure starts to drive in from off the Atlantic, although it is being blocked um, by this ridge over Scandinavia. This looks unsettled, wet and windy as we go to the middle part of uh, February. What happens as we get into the second half of the month is that high pressure starts to ridge in from the south and the east. So we're finishing up uh, with, again, high pressure dominating to our east, albeit again, this one is more or less placing us on the mild side of the blocking feature, but it will only take a very slight adjustment to start to pull in some uh, really cold easy wings. On some of them, number nine looks like that, uh, generally quite unsettled and fairly mild for the north anyway in a week's time as we head up towards the uh, middle of the month and uh, also up towards day 10, we find that high pressure is increasingly building uh, to our east. Uh, and then we go into rather more of an unsettled phase and the wind turns into the north as we go towards the final stages of the month. So we finish up with quite a block uh, setting up around Greenland and Iceland and the wind turning into a very cold uh, north or northeasterly there. It takes a long time to get itself into a cold uh, pattern, but eventually it does get there, and we finish up uh, by the 20th of February. We've gone into uh, really quite a cold and block pattern. Number 10, we're halfway through. It looks like that. It's, we've got uh, low pressure out to the northwest, high pressure to ourselves next weekend. As we get up towards day 10, we find ridging building through the UK and going up towards uh, Scandinavia and then we just keep high pressure close to the country into the second half of the month. That's how we finish up with the wind uh, coming from a chilly northwesterly direction but not particularly cold uh, with that one. That's a reasonably mild ensemble member. Number 11 shows that uh, it's unsettled for next Sunday in the north and west, probably dry and chilly in the south and the southeast. And then as we go into the extended range, it stays unsettled up to the middle part of the month. High pressure is building all the time to our northeast, and it's starting to break us out of that unsettled weather. So by the time we get to the end of the uh, run, which is 20th of February, the winds are in from the east, albeit they're not particularly cold winds with that ensemble. Remember, number 12 uh, is unsettled to the north and west next weekend. Uh, and then high pressure is uh, building to our east as we're going up towards day 10, which is the 14th of February. Uh, and then the high pressure takes over the pattern and we start to drag in uh, easterly winds into the second half of February. Notice this deep cold pool that's surging across uh, northern Europe. So this is turning bitterly cold and we finish up with a big freeze taking place there with this ensemble member by the 20th of February. Uh, we've got a big freeze, a very cold upper uh, upper pool of air has moved in. Um, upper air temperatures, I'll just show you what the upper air temperatures are there at the end. Uh, so we're talking about sort of the minus 15 ice firm getting close to the east coast of the UK. That's almost similar to the freeze of February uh, 1991. That's our first big freeze ensemble member by the end of uh, the run, 20th of February ensemble member number 12. This is number 13, and next weekend we're in that uh, westerly wind, which is bringing unsettled weather to uh, the UK. Let's see what happens as we get towards the middle part of the month and then beyond. So uh, this one is more Atlantic driven, although 
It is starting to turn a bit colder as we get through towards the end of the run. Um, but nothing particularly cold doing with that one on Sol Mem number 13. It's a milder option. Number 14 looks unsettled next weekend. And uh, as we go into the extended range, it stays unsettled up to and beyond the middle part of the month. We keep that high pressure to our southwest. That's how we finish up generally in a flat westerly flow. So that's a very mild ensemble member at uh, number 14. Number 15 uh, looks like that. So unsettled for the north anyway. Uh, next weekend, we go into the extended range and we're turning the winds into the north. This is a colder ensemble member, uh, number 15. Uh, that's how we finish up. Uh, quite chilly, bit in betwixt in between. Really, that's not a desperately cold ensemble member uh, by any means, but it is colder than, uh, for example, ensemble member number fourteen. Uh, number sixteen looks like that. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia next weekend, more or less keeping us cold across many parts of the country. So as early as next weekend, we have got quite a bit of uncertainty about the pattern here, actually. Uh, as we go into the extended range, uh, so this takes us a little bit beyond the middle part of the month, we keep high pressure generally going up over Scandinavia, so generally staying quite cold there into the second half of uh, February. That's how we finish up, still with the heights over Scandinavia. We've got low pressure out to the northwest of the country, uh, so that's kind of inconclusive, that ensemble. Uh, member, but overall that's quite a cold and frosty one at the very least. This is number 17 and uh, we see generally unsettled weather next weekend. Uh, then beyond that uh, we start to raise the heights to our north and west again, push the trough southeast, so for example by the 16th of February we're in a very cold uh, north to north east wind and then as we go into the end of the run uh, we keep things cold, we keep this high pressure bridging through the country and going up towards Scandinavia. Uh, this is number 18. The high pressure is in over Scandinavia next weekend. So that looks generally quite cold and frosty for most parts of the country uh, next weekend. Beyond that, uh, we see a strengthening of that ridge over Scandinavia. But low pressure is fighting it in the Atlantic. Uh, and that's how we finish up. Uh, generally going back into more of a milder westerly flow. You know, some member number 18. Number 19 looks stormy uh, to the northwest of the country for next weekend. Stays unsettled as we go towards day 10. Uh, and then beyond uh, day 10 into the second half of February, the high pressure is taking over across Scandinavia, turning the wind into the east. Not a bitterly cold wind, but uh, certainly pretty cold weather coming in with that one. That's how we finish up. It looks like we're going into more of a block pattern. Heights are rising to our northwest. Still got relatively high heights over Scandinavia. But this trough is sinking southwards. Uh, and then finally, ensemble member number 20 looks like that. Uh, westerly winds for next weekend. We go into the extended range, returning quite uh, stormy there for a while. But then the high pressure is taking over across Scandinavia again from the second half of uh, February. It's having a really good go getting the wind in to the east. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, uh, but I think we have got a trend here that many of these ensemble members are reducing the strength of the polar vortex. Those purple colours, the pink and purples, are disappearing across Greenland in the extended range of most of these ensemble members. That's probably in response to the uh, sudden stratospheric warming. Um, but, of course, we haven't got... Uh, conclusive agreement uh, yet on exactly what the impacts of that warming are going to be. We see we have got several ensemble members that are cold. Uh, some of them are very cold going into the uh, second half of uh, February. But it's a long way off still. It's over 10 days. So you wouldn't expect particularly good agreement uh, as to what the impacts of this warming event of the stratosphere uh, will be. Um, so we just got to keep monitoring it and watch this space. But uh, clearly we have got indications here that uh, February could be shaping up to be quite a cold month. And uh, it may well be, as I said in today's second video, it may well be that the coldest weather this winter is still to come and also the snowiest weather this winter is possibly still to come. It may come really late, uh, but if we do um, lock in, particularly like uh, the control um, GFS uh, on something we're showing, 
with that big block over Greenland setting up. If we do see something like that developing in the second half of February, it could get really very cold uh, for a time indeed. So um, just watch your space. Right, that's it for today's uh, videos. We'll pick up the story tomorrow, of course. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.